I want to now show you some of the most common errors that can occur when you work with SwiftUI in Xcode. The updates for Xcode to show the correct information for SwiftUI has become a lot better and a lot faster with each Xcode iteration. So it get, should get a little bit easier to understand what we are doing wrong. And most of the time we need to read the read and interpret the error description. I'm going to show you a couple of examples or the most common ones that I see. And then you can go through, if you have yourself a problem, you can go through them and maybe find what's going on, what's wrong. You can also find the written version of this error <laughs> summary down in the description. I started and made a new view. It's just a template with hello world. Let's take this one out. And now it actually fails. So it gives me the error property declared as opaque return type, but has no initial expressions from which to infer an underlying type. So this opaque return type is referencing to this sum, it's an opaque type. Basically it's telling me we are expecting a view and you didn't return anything, give us something. Or maybe the second one is a little bit more understandable, which is missing return in accessory expecting to return some view. So the moment I am adding here text, it disappears. When you have this properties or the computer properties in Swift, you actually don't need to write return here. So it knows that if there's one element in there, it just returns that one. Now, if you have, if you want to declare some properties, like if I want to say here, hello, let text. Oh, interesting. It doesn't return anything. So it doesn't give me, it only gives me warnings, but I also don't see anything in the preview. And if you look at the warning information, it's telling me that this property name was never used. And the same for the text, text, text was never used. This is because I declared these two properties and one of them is actually just a string. The other one is a view text. This is actually a Swift UI view text. But because I have here two properties, it doesn't know what this is and I don't return. I just declare them. I never return them. So if I fix this, I can go for return text. Oh, this is probably, this is going to show me this. I can also make changes to text name and put here the name. And now we have Paul in there. You can declare properties inside of the body, but this is a computed property and usually it's not recommended or it's not a normal pattern. However, inside of the struct or this main view, you can create other properties. So we could move the, at least the name over there. I actually don't need to declare this here twice. I can just keep the text, the view text itself. Now, what happens if I add here a second text saying hello world? I know my examples are not the best. So now you're like, mm, I don't really see anything in the preview. I only see hello, Paul. I was, I want to have my other text. So mm, because it's expecting here from this prop in this property, it's expecting one view, but we are returning, we're having actually two. So what it does for the preview, it's basically seeing the preview here where I use this and seeing these two separate views and it's treating them with two separate previews. Now the difference that happened, maybe you noticed, I have now here two preview open. So if I go for the second one, it's actually showing hello world. And the first one, hello Paul. It's a bit tricky because it's kind of hidden that you have the second version of, of the preview, a second preview here. Now the thing is, because I have here two views and I actually want to bring them together to one combined view, I need to have a container encapsulate where both of them are together with some layout options. Some of these previews, like a group, some of these containers, like a group, they actually don't add any layout. They don't bring it together. It's just a wrapper, just one container without any alignment. And you don't see a difference here. I still have two previews. Now the one view that is returned here, but the preview treats it as two separate views or all the views that you have listed here will be shown in a different preview. And in some cases you can generate quite a lot of tabs here. Maybe should, let's just call them like a tab. 
If you want to see them together, these two views, these two texts, we need to use one of these layout containers, like a vStack. So now I have the text together and my, I only have your one preview, which you see here with this blue box. If you want to see multiple preview versions, maybe we want to have different tests for different names. First, I need to make this property here reusable. So I'm just declaring this property as a string. Now, every time I want to create one of these views, like in my preview, I need to actually give a value for this property name. And I can use here Paul, so it doesn't change, but I can create a separate version. Now you see it's appearing here and I tap and this preview has this name. So just be aware if you are trying to add something and it doesn't appear, check on the preview. If you may be creating more previews. Okay, I'm going to change something now. And it gives me again an error. Cannot find text with two T's in scope. This means the name is not correct. Text, if you think you declared another view with this name, then it's not in the project because you misspelled, you probably misspelled something. And the best way to go around this is to type and wait for the suggestions and press enter. And like this, we have the advantage of the correct spelling with autocompletion. Open parenthesis is the same. You can choose one of the initializers. Okay, this is um, an example, or I can just remove this one T here and the error disappears. So try to go for autocompletion. If I now remove all the content in the vStack and I start to use just start from scratch by saying vStack open parenthesis close parenthesis, I get one <laughs> rather long error message and it appears there are some changes done. Sometimes you are using something that is only available for the newer versions, like here is only available for iOS 16. So in this case, we can have a version <laughs> version checking, or I just go to a one that is actually supported for all of them. And I forgot the argument, I just that use the. Now I'm going to add some more elements in this V stack. I know it doesn't make sense. It's just an example. Maybe I should wait in between. Okay, now you see all of my texts and I keep on adding more. And then suddenly I'm getting an error for one more. I'm I basically added the same one, but it gives me an error for this one suddenly. Okay, this error is really not helpful. Trading closure passed to parameter of type CG float that does not accept a closure. Okay, this is not the error. <laughs> okay, don't look at the description. This is not helpful. The problem is in the stacks, they only accept a maximum of 11 subviews elements in there. And right now I have, or it's 10. 10 is the maximum number and I have 11. So if I remove the last one, if I uncomment this one, it's actually working again. So you see, it's really just this, as soon as you go more than 11, you get a problem. And the way to work around this is to create nested stacks inside. So I'm embedding this for in a vStack. And now, although I have 11, it still allows me to go there. So in some cases, you are adding more elements in, in a stack. It's the same for H stacks. And then you hit this barrier and you get some random error messages. So just need to use additional stacks because now it appears like we have four plus three plus one element in this list. And then it's less than 10. You can also use a group because this one doesn't give any alignment information. Another very common error is, for example, if I say I have here this text and I put a one, now it gives me an error. No exact match in call to initializer. The problem is that this is actually a type mismatch. So if I have a number of type CG float one and I use this here, we get a little bit of better information. So it tells me this initializer requires that CG float conforms to string protocol. So string is the main point here. We need something that is a string, not a number or CG float, floating number. So sometimes it's uh, type mismatches because um, yeah, Swift is strongly typed. Everything has a type and everything needs to at least conform to the correct type requirements. Okay, now we have this one number in there. Let's say I want to change this number and I can add here a button. 
Okay, sometimes you need to... Usually it should give you all the initializers. So I use the one button title action. Add plus one. And I say I want to change this number that is displayed. And say plus equal one. So this is a shorthand sign for increasing this number. Now the new error is the operator isn't mutable. Number is a let constant. Replace let with var. So lets are constants with var variables that can be changed. So I press here fix and my property changes to a var. This gets me a new error. Say isn't mutable, self is immutable. This is because we are working here with structs and I made immutable, which means that to get a, even though it's a property, when you change a property in a struct, the whole struct is actually changed. So it needs to be variable but it's per default in SwiftUI not. And in order to make this changeable during runtime, we need to use one of the special property wrappers and make this here a state property. This now moves this property outside of this views and it's, it's stored somewhere else. Okay, it's working. And in order to test this, let me just go in. I'm in the live preview, which means that I can click here on buttons. When I click, my number increases and this label changes or this text changes. This kind of state properties or this prefixes are needed in SwiftUI to get this automatic updating of the UI because I basically here just change these property, which because of this state property wrapper causes then the U, this view to be recreated and redrawn and then we update this text correctly showing the new value. There's a couple of other of these property wrappers that are very important in order to um, see some things moving correctly. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is maybe if we hit a certain number, I want to show something else or I actually want to change here this name property. Okay, maybe it's not the best example. So let's say um, if my number is larger than I'm going to change the name to world. This is again this problem with cannot assign to property. So I need to make this a so there's a <laughs> there's a few problems right now. So the first one type cannot conform to view. This is because it takes the first property that I have here, which is this name, but this is not a view, it's a string. So we want to we need to return a view, so I need to add here a return before the v stack. It's evaluating again, and now we have the other problem again. So it's a let constant, I need to do the same. I need to make this here a state var. If I type and I go higher than three, it's actually not updating here. This is because I said this view needs to be recreated because when, when the number changes, we want to recreate this view, so it changes here correctly in this text and we are actually doing it in an order that SwiftUI doesn't like it. When the body is called, or when, when a property changes this number, then we recreate and this view is recreated. So this code inside of the body is recreated rerun. So it has something to draw. But when we do this, we actually also change another property, which will cause then, because it's also a state property to recreate this body to redraw the view. So we are doing this at a cor not correct moment. Trying to do some if statements and changing properties just like this in the body is not giving you, will not give you the, will have some unexpected behaviors in most cases. That's a very, uh, I didn't manage to get that error this time. Usually there is a modifying state during view update. This will cause undefined behavior error. So it basically means we are doing, we shouldn't, we should try to do our changes in the right moment. And in this case, it's actually very easy to fix because when I press this button, I increase the number. This is when I change the state. And it's also a good moment to also change the name property if the number is high enough. So I'm going to move this also in my button action. So now I try again. And when I reach here four, my text changes to world correctly. There's other moments where you can also do some changes like in the initializer or when the view appears or disappears, or you can react to changes of one of these properties. 
but I'm going to talk about all of these strategies a little bit later. Just be aware that inside, whenever this view, when this var body is run, you shouldn't do any extra evaluations. This is different. The button is different because this is an action call enclosure that is specifically called and then triggers and view update in this case. Last is the, um, if nothing of this works, you can always try to go for product clean build folder, then rebuild this project or product clean build folder, close Xcode, restart your Mac, and then reopen everything and run again. Sometimes it's something in the caches that you need to, that you only get rid of when you close everything. But luckily this kind of solution is needed less and less for the new Xcode versions. If you found this helpful, leave a like and subscribe. May the coding gods be with you and your Xcode always run. Until next time, happy coding.